New on Curiosity Stream. She was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And... What if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's impossible escapes. Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. What's up? It's your boy, V. Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, The Podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Three time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Stephen Throw Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed, and today we toast uh, an unidentified Good Samaritan from Ladner, British Columbia. Now, you might remember a couple of years ago, all of these shoes kept washing up off the coast of British Columbia. Yes. And then inside of the shoes were human feet, which is what made the whole thing much more disturbing. Well, this guy, it looks like it's happening again. Uh, in this case, he was driving down the road, and on the side of the road... There is a severed human foot. In fact, there was a police officer on foot. He was stopped by this particular passing driver, and he says the driver appeared quite distraught and states that there's a severed foot roadside by the pump house. That is his report. Back to the police station. So the officer, he goes to the scene, and sure enough, there is a severed human foot. This poor driver, he is now a mess. He's shaking, et cetera, et cetera. Well, they come out to collect the evidence, see if they can trace who this foot belongs to. Yeah, it was a mannequin foot. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. So what they decided to post, they said, look, the good news, it's a mannequin's foot. The bad news is the driver is still freaked out because even though we've given him the news that it's a mannequin, his, his adrenaline has taken over. And then they say, quote, if you happen upon a mannequin with a missing left foot, let them know that it can be found at the Delta Police Jesus Department. Christ. So there you go. Okay. Let's drink. I mean, the good news is it was a mannequin it, foot. It was a mannequin foot. But, you know, if you live in that part of Canada and with all those feet that have been washing up for, well, like four years... These things kept washing right. up like you have every reason to believe that it is, in fact, a severed human foot. But we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitchola! The Men's Room presents Profile This. Hey, Stephen Throwhill, could you please tell everyone how Profile This is played? I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Justin. Welcome to the Men's Room. Go Kitty Cat. Oh, ah. All right, Justin, you understand how this year game is played? I sure do, bro. Fantastic. You get one of three stories to choose from. We have the wonderful world of drugs. We have bite me. In other words, what food did someone uh, what did someone find in their food? And finally, interior decorating, where you guess the foreign objects that ended up on the inside of someone. What category would you like to select from today? Uh, let's go dealer's choice. Dealer's choice. Let's go drugs. Drugs. I've done drugs in a while. I've never gotten a dealer's choice. I actually felt like I was on the spot. Mm -hmm. What do I pick? All right, right, Justin, here's your story. A woman by the name of Sarah McKinnon. She's a second grade teacher at Aiken Elementary School. Well, she was detained after a series of traffic violations led officers to search her vehicle. Now, she attracted the attention from police after the rental vehicle she was driving ran two stop signs and made an illegal U-turn. Police, aided by a dog unit, they found a clear gallon-sized plastic bag filled with a suspected drug, which was placed in a cardboard box intended to hold an iron. 
Several more bags containing the drug were found along with another bag containing weed. While she was detained on drug trafficking charges, later released, they say, quote, The individual has been a teacher for 21 years. Serving most recently at this elementary school as standard protocol, the employee has been placed on administrative leave. Now, according to the Augusta Chronicle, McKinnon, uh, McKinnon was also arrested back in 2010 after officers found the same drug on her, but those charges were later dropped. Now, the question is, what kind of drugs is this teacher slinging? Is it crack, meth, oxys, or heroin? Oh, I'm leaning oxy. What about you guys? What, uh, what, where did you say the state was? The chief? South Carolina. South Carolina. Hmm. And part of it, she's not just a user. Apparently, she also sells. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. It was a big bag. It was a big, they had a, they found a gallon jug full of the drug. And she was trying to hide that in a uh, in a box. Justin, I'm going to go meth based on the volume. Okay. And she had weed with her already. Right? She also had weed yeah. with her. Yeah. What were the choices? Crack, meth, oxys, or heroin. Ooh. That's a tough one. It is tough. I mean, South Carolina, and all of them are feasible, right? Yeah, I get why he went oxy. Would you go with Miles? Meth? I went meth based on the volume. I feel like that's the most popular right now. It's probably because it's cheap, sure. Yeah. Well, and she cheap. has a lot of it. It's cheap and it's a, in the high lasts forever. But I just feel like if your teacher was on meth, you'd probably notice. I'd feel like you would, but again, elementary schools, who knows? But you got popped for the same thing 11 years ago. Yeah, and that makes me, that makes me lean towards oxy. I'm trying to think of what drug you would have in a gallon jug. I would not put any drug personally in a gallon drug. Well, like jug. PCP's a liquid, so that would be in a gallon drug. Sure, okay. I need a gallon of PCP. <laughs> oh. I am not sure, but she got popped 11 years ago. Mm-hmm. So to me, it's either crack or the pills. Makes sense. You know, just to be different, I'll go with crack. She had a gallon of crack. Okay, Ted's going to go crack. I'm going to go meth. Sound like you're insulting. Justin, what are you thinking? I'm going to stick with Oxy. Oxy's final answer. We're going to find out what she was slinging. Was it crack, meth, Oxy's, or heroin next? That was a tea. New on Curiosity Stream. Just because it hasn't been done before doesn't mean you can't. Watch Earth's greatest minds forge our path to a better tomorrow. It's engineering the future and... Jaws, Star Wars, The Godfather, E.T., the biggest movies have even bigger music. From King Kong to The Dark Knight. See how musicians scored Hollywood's greatest hits on great film composers' music of the movies. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember... It didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today. And our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. $20 million. $19 million. $6 million. $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. All right, so drugs featured today on Profile. The second grade, uh, grade teacher, she was uh, detained after she ran not one but two stop signs. Mm-hmm. Had some weed in her car, but she had a big jar or something else. Jug. A jug. Gallon uh, jug. Which she'd been arrested for, what, 10 years ago? Same possession? 10 years ago, yeah. Possession of the okay. same thing. Right. question was, other than the weed, what was a uh, second grade uh, teacher slinging there? Was it crack, meth, oxys, or heroin? And Justin, that is the very question we posed to you. The Ted Smith, we start with you. So you already know that's oh, bad news. Oh, come on. You went with crack? Oh, I'm sorry. Justin, you went with oxys. 
I too uh, am uh, sorry uh, for that. It was not oxy. Uh, Turns out our very own Miles Montgomery was correct. Yeah. It was, in fact, methamphetamine. Yep. Mm, She's yeah. been slinging it for a decade now. I knew it. I knew it. Just yes. like most elementary school teachers. Ice, huh? Mm hmm. Slinging the ice. Now for all TV news, all time, time for TV time with Dan. And now. Because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box. I'm again. The Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. Ah! Sorry to do this to you. Oh! Yeah. Breaking news! Yeah, we're, uh, this is uh, very important. Most people get nervous of breaking news. Ted's like, all right! Breaking news! Yeah, let's get it! Well, you know, it's not going to be serious. Uh, guys, uh, Ola Dinosaurs, I, the official, the boat meat medic, have been patiently and painstakingly picked as a random thing to track while enjoying the antics of you and your fellow listeners during the show. I don't want to track your FCC violations as a dedicated staff member already does that. We mm. read those. Uh, all right. Yes, all right. So here is the stat that I tracked this year on your show. Known as the hottest game show, uh, guess that late, nice ho- uh, late, that late night host, Ted versus Miles and Thrill, and a side deal. So I had a month-to-month stats, but let's just do the year-end totals. Ted was able to squeeze 54 of his own jokes by both Miles and Thrill. Uh Aha! All right. right. So they were your jokes. We thought they were late night. 54 got through. Dude, I read that email, and I thought he just meant, like, jokes you guys didn't get. Oh, (laughs) No, meaning we they're so it was, stupid. When they were so good, we thought it was Stephen Colbert or somebody <laughs> no, else. That's better. I no, thought it was no. just like get swifty. As the uh, as the month rolled on, uh, both of you started to pick up his jokes better, and by the end of the year, kept his numbers to just single digits. Uh-huh. All right. In the heat of battle of Miles versus Thrill, Miles crushed, uh, crushed Thrill three hundred seven to two eighty four. You don't have to rub it in. It isn't exactly a crushing defeat. About to crush. That being said, like if you do read a joke. And it is Seth Meyers. One of us guesses it correct. So yeah. basically, what did you get right? So I want to thank each and every one of you personally for being the distraction needed for 2020. May we uh, all be able to enjoy many KISW events together in the new year. See you, hopefully, a Red Festival and bring that major headliner, the new originals. Thanks again. <laughs> that right. from Men, the <laughs> Boat Meet Medic. So there you go. A little update there on uh, the little. Uh, That's pretty cool. Ted versus Late Night Game. Yeah, very cool. So, all right, what are our choices today? Uh, as always, you'll have the Jimmys. Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon. We'll throw in Stephen Colbert. Okay. And we'll toss in the Myers fella. And then, of course, Ted Smith. Is it Ted or is it late night? That's right. These guys have our teams of talents right here. It's up in 12 of the monologues each and every night. It is up to you to determine. Is this an actual late night joke and from whom? Or could it be a The Ted Smith original? Uh, CEO of Whole Foods, John Mackey, is being criticized after saying health care would not be necessary if people ate better and lived healthier lifestyles. So I just can't wait until John breaks his leg and the ER doctor prescribes him a $20 mango. The <laughs> <Need judgment. laughs> Seth Myers. Jimmy Fallon. I read that the CEO of Whole Foods, John Mackey, is being criticized after saying health care would not be necessary if people would eat better and live healthier lifestyles. Can't wait till John breaks his leg and the ER doctor prescribes him a $20 mango. You know, mango is one of those fruits. They're like, I eat a lot of mango flavored things, but I don't know that I've ever sat down and ate a mango. Right. Mango flavored stuff is great, but you're right. When it comes to a mango, I'm never anywhere where they just have mango. Yeah, other than the grocery store. Well, yes, other than the grocery store. That's I have been in places that have mango, yes. <laughs> I saw a guy eating a mango once at a festival. He looked cool. <laughs> he looked cool eating a mango? mango yeah. Guy. Hey, bro, I just want to let you know, man. I know you're doing attention you know? to the Yeah, he's getting his mango yeah. You look cool as hell eating that mango. The NCAA announced that all 67 games of the men's March Madness will be played in Indiana in an effort to stop the spread of the coronavirus. And it might work. Because what are you going to do after the games? Go out? (laughs) The Ted Smith. (laughs) Seth Myers. Seth Myers. The NCAA announced (laughs) that all 67 games of the men's March Madness basketball tournament will be played in Indiana in an effort to stop the spread of the coronavirus. And it might work, because what are you going to do after the game? Go out? (laughs) He's not kidding. I don't know if you guys saw this or heard about this one yet. But, uh... In Toronto, two men were caught attempting to steal a suitcase full of meat. Authorities caught the men while conducting a stakeout. Ted Smith. Yeah, that's me. 
<laughs> Stakeout. There was a lot of options with that one. Sure. Mike and I couldn't decide. Open and shut case. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. But, uh, and then we, we just got into, like, I don't know, chops and this and that. We just started. And I was like, hey, we, we got one. I'm writing it down. <laughs> Officials in Scotland announced the new lockdown restrictions that will... It, that will... Impl- <clears throat> Officials in Scotland announced new lockdown restrictions that will be implemented to stop the spread of the newer and more infectious strain of the coronavirus, which means citizens will now have to conduct all drunken fistfights over Zoom. <laughs> foul. Yeah, foul. Seth Meyers. Officials in Scotland announced that new God. lockdown measures will be implemented to stop the spread of the newer a more infectious strain of the coronavirus, which means citizens there will now have to conduct all drunken fistfights over Zoom. <laughs> you know, it's funny with the Zoom, right? Because I use it just for hanging out with, like, friends and family. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like, I was talking to my buddy in uh, in London when it turned midnight. Or, like, on my birthday, like, <laughs> like my, my family pops on, and they're like, who's that? And I'm like, oh, that's my buddy Ron. He's over in Belfast. <laughs> You know, yeah, it's just weird because it's like they've never met him. Right. Well, because he's in Belfast. Yeah, it's a pretty good reason. Uh, I think we were talking about this the other day. There's a uh, children's show in Denmark about a man with a giant uncontrollable penis. (laughs) Yeah, and you heard Ted correctly. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a children's show. And yes, his penis is giant and uncontrollable. John Dillerman. (laughs) Okay. He's got the idea. This is ridiculous. Well, and they canceled Caillou. they, They write it out and kind of explain what's going on. Please. Okay, so he's got he's got an insane, insanely long and often uncontrollable penis. When he can control it, he uses it to do cool things like taming lions or bouncing around on it like Tigger does on his tail. But it also tends to get him in trouble because <laughs> it has a mind of its own. I bet. <laughs> so obviously, people are like, "Yo, yo, <laughs> like, what is this about?" But one psychologist says it's all good. She says, John Dillerman talks to children and shares their way of thinking. And kids do find genitals funny. The show depicts a man who is impulsive and not always in control, who makes mistakes like kids do. Sure. But crucially, Dillerman always makes it right. He takes responsibility for his actions. I don't he question that. He pays his child support. <laughs> I don't question that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I just think it's more like, I picture like my son watching this when he's at the age where he would watch it. Like, his D would be out constantly and he'd be doing mm-hmm. dumb stuff. He'd be bouncing. Knock off. a salt shaker off the table. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. yeah. And like, it is kind of funny, but I can't laugh at the moment. You know, and again, this is the thing I said yesterday. It's like, look, I don't care. It's just odd to me because you have to think of the process that I had to go through for it to actually be on TV. So first, someone came up with it. And they go, okay, whatever. We can get drunk, get stoned. We'd come up with that. But then you said, you know what, this idea is good enough. We're going to sit down with the bosses or, or the brass and run this idea by them. Where I would assume it, it would have just gone down in flames right there. But no, but they, the bosses said, you know what, I like where you're going with this. Hey, let's get our animation crew. Animation crew said, cool. And then, you know, the final person who signs off on this goes, wait a minute. It's a children's show about a man with an unusually large and uncontrollable pain. You know what, let's put it on. And not only that, Ted, we've heard uh, in the last two days news from children's Danish programming. Because you know, we're weird. hot on that. So this story came out, and I and, and they canceled the show called Caillou, which I know you don't know. Be yeah. glad you don't. Bro. But either way, I think they replaced Cairo or uh, Caillou, Caillou with this big uh, Johnson fellow here. You know what? I'm going for Big Johnson because I, Caillou is John Dillerman. John pretty, good, pretty good trade, I think. It, it if is. If you're going to cancel Caillou, you might as well have a show like that. What is the Caillou, the Caillou show's that bad? It's just It stupid. is terrible, it's man. How do you know, Miles? Because my kids watched it. Oh, it's been on that long. Oh, it's been on 20 years. And you, yeah. you can't understand how this thing survived. And, and look, there's a lot of really terrible kids shows. I get it. I don't like That Paw was the Patrol. worst of the one at the time then. That's the thing. So, you know, when your kids are like, will you watch one with us? It's like, all right, I can do Little Einsteins. I can get through Paw Patrol. I hate them, but I can give Caillou. You just, no. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not watching this with you. This show is so bad. Your kids ever watch, uh, ah, what is it? There's some show, like, sometimes I'll be watching Comedy Central, like Adult Swim, mm-hmm. and I'll fall asleep, and then I'll wake up in the morning. I want to say Aqua Team Hunger Force, but that's Probably. wrong. Because that's on comedy, or, uh, it's like a bunch of teenagers, Team Titans Go. Yes. Yes. For, right. oh, they're not on it now, but probably about last year at this time, 
They loved that show. Yeah, well, I'm just like I'm like that. That one's got to be popular. But I could get through it. It was okay. There's a few moments you chuckle as an adult, but all right. It's kind of the best of the worst. Uh, Katie Couric is going to guest host Jeopardy for a week after Ken Jennings. So here's the deal: Jeopardy came out right, and like a lot of people were like, "Oh, we should get Ken Jennings to host." You know, he's the winningest guy ever. Sure, sure. And then over uh, the Christmas, and they and they never said he was going to be a permanent host they just said he'll fill in for some right. weeks and this yeah. and that but then over the break some of uh ken jennings tweets came out some people were like we don't really like ken jennings so i think this is kind of trying to soften the blow like well we'll have a week with katie Kirk. Yeah. Uh, well. okay. yeah and they're bringing back the other guy who did real well which he's, he's gonna host for there's three of them yeah there's i think the guy right, with the mustache them all back. yeah the, like there's the gambler guy there's a dude who always looks serious and there's ken jennings like they're the three mm-hmm. jeopardy guys right but i, I can't Houtzhauer or something like that? Like James Houtzhauer? I, I don't know. We kept calling him Jeopardy James. Yep, that's right. We did. So Jeopardy James it is. All right. Yeah, that'll work. Plus, I mean, Katie Couric, right? People know her from the Today Show, mm-hmm. from hosts and other stuff. Like, I don't know. It's Katie Couric. Like, yeah, yeah right, she's that'll Katie work. Couric. Yeah. I mean, I very rarely meet people that are like, I hate Katie Couric. I, I don't know that about I hate her. Right, like you might find people that go, I hate Brian Gumble. They used to host the Today Show with him. It's her. only because they've seen him. <laughs> right? <laughs> there's something about him so easy to not like. I don't know if there's a pair of brothers that are that successful in, te- in television and entertainment. That, that are could that be, different? Right, that could be that liked, liked or that disliked. Like, people don't like Brian Gumble. Everybody likes Greg Gumble. Sure. That's true. You know what I mean? He's hosting the the death show. Do you know how we could uh, how you could come up with another team of brothers is put Ronde Barber on TV. Yeah, that's people good like Ronde Barber. Whatever happened people to Brian Gumble? Whatever, whatever, whatever happened to Brian Gumble? He's still around, I think. Is he Brian Gumble? Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen him on anything. You know what he hosts? Yeah, but is, it, does he, is that all he does? Real he, or real sports? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, think, he used to be on everything. Yeah. I mean, it's always hard to tell, right? Because you like, I know him from real sports. And I'm sure he saved enough money that he'd be fine. I think he's probably okay. Mm-hmm. But also, sometimes guys like that do like local radio or this or that. Okay, right, right, right. Like, there's a lot of guys on ESPN. Like, till I moved to Seattle, I had no idea John Clayton also did radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't like, know oh, either. Right, like I just knew him from ESPN. Right, like uh, you know the pregame shows and this and that. Always had the uh, the Seattle skyline behind him. Right, like right. Sal Palantonio. Like I don't, Philly. Right, I know he's a big Philly guy, but I assume he does a radio show there. With a name like that, I think you have to. I think legally, if your name's Sal Palantonio and you live in Philadelphia, you must also do a radio show. Or you show. own a pizza parlor. Right. One of the two. Yeah. He had his option. Or he's in the mob. Or he's in the mob, right. You want to go to Sal's for pizza? Hell yeah. Sal Palantonio. Are you kidding me? See, in Philly, you just say Sal. It's like, which one? Right. You could be talking one of nine people. You get a cheesesteak there if you want. And Sal is also the name of the pizzeria in uh, Do the Right Thing. That's right. Okay. Uh, we've been talking a lot about Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've got, like, I'm watching so much Cobra Kai. I'm getting to the point now where I'm like, we need to calm down because it's going to be over in like a week for us. Oh, my kids are devastated because we finished. So they have three seasons out. We completed season three earlier this week. So already he was like, hey, man, when does the next one come out? I was like, dude, this one, like, the body's not even cold yet. You know, he has no concept. And I explained to him, I said, you know, when I was growing up, not to sound like that old guy, but here it comes. Uh, when you really liked the show, we couldn't binge it. You had to wait a week. And Christmas sucked because then it was like a three-week break before you could I'm get I'm not back. even sure we knew how long a season was either. Well, they used to do more episodes per... It used to be 26 episodes was a season because the show started... It ran concurrent like with your school year. started right. in September right. and ended in May. Now it's, well, we have our fall shows to go September to December and they'll return next September. And then we have this other list of shows we start in January and they go basically through May, right? Well, and some of them too now, they go, it's the first like... Right. First part season it's our finale. fall finale See, yeah, or whatever. Fall finale. Like, all right. Come on, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. And we've had this conversation before. I, I, I'm still not sure which I like better. I mean, because it's like the if you binge it, it's great. You can watch them in a row. But then it's like, man, I wish we had more. I feel like it's like this, though. So I, I do feel like just release it once a week or whatever. When the, the season's done, then you can make a binge run. Like, so like, Man- Mandalorian. Mandalorian. You know, Game of Thrones, again, I didn't watch it when it was on TV, but people had to wait a week. I got to binge it. But, you know, if you were there real time, you waited a week, you talked about it for six freaking days, right? And I could, but that's like more of a choice. Cobra Kai, it's like, look, it's already there. 
I have no willpower. My son obviously inherited none of that from me. So it's like, sure, man, throw in another episode. What the hell? Yeah, I'm with you. I'm just saying, like, I, I don't know personally. I can't decide which I, you know, because I'd probably be annoyed if I had to wait a whole week for a new episode. Mm-hmm. But also, I'm already like, oh, man, we're flying through season two. <laughs> right. Like, we're only going to have one season left. But yeah. that's also why Netflix does so well. People have watched so many different shows, uh, Amazon Prime, that, whatever, right. you name it. But they do it because you can crush a show, say, in a week, and then you end up watching another show. Yeah. You know, for them, there's a, there's a great benefit to it. Yeah, and I was seeing something the other day that the Peacock Network is going to like have a tiered system on how much you pay All right. based on like how much of Friends or you want to watch. And I was like, uh, I just want to watch the Premier League. Right? right. <laughs> is that so much to ask? <laughs> right. Like, so what's the what's the base version there? Right. Zero Friends. Yeah. Like I'm good. Right. Man, I tried to watch an episode over the break. You're right. Like I I faithfully watch that show every Thursday. And now when I watch him, it's like, this show sucks. Friends? Yeah. I've heard the opposite from people, too. Same thing. Like, I didn't really get into it. Now I'm really enjoying the jokes. Right. And people love it. I mean, like, and I remember you were, wait, weren't you, it was, you weren't a Friends person. No. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a big deal. But, yeah, that, that one I can't rewatch. I'll, I'll sit around, you know, I'm going to date myself again. I'll watch every Seinfeld that I've seen freaking ten times. Right. And watch it again. But, yeah, fr- uh, Friends, I was just like, ah, can't do it. I think it was just... It- it did well. People like the characters. But inevitably, I think the thing that ages the worst is the jokes are just too predictable. Most sitcoms are that way. Yeah. You know, you can feel the setup. But, you know, Friends has all this hype around it. So when you watch a show like that, you feel like it can be, I don't know, a little more subtle, a little a little just funnier. As opposed to set you up, say the joke. Set you up, say the joke. Right. And, like, Seinfeld just has, I mean, there's a lot of people that quote it. They but, don't even know they're quoting it. Right. But Seinfeld, it rarely was there like a setup for a joke. Just everyone's response to anything was kind of funny. Uh, we're talking about Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. This is crazy. Ralph Macchio is 59. Today. Now he turned 59 in November. Oh, good. <laughs> Happy birthday, Ralph. <laughs> A little late. Sorry, man. <laughs> I cannot believe that either. I, I'm with you. That's insane. Yeah. He might be older than Pat Morita was when Pat Morita played Mr. Miyagi. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, this won't shock you. You know, he just says, I blame my parents. They both look very young for their age. I have a youthful energy about me for some reason. And then he goes, healthy lifestyle doesn't hurt. Well, But sure. I think I've gotten lucky in the gene department, which is pretty honest. Right. He's like, look, I do live a healthy lifestyle, so that helps. But that ain't it. Right. I was <laughs> like, well, I mean, look, we've had this conversation. Me and my buddy have this conversation all the time about, like, certain athletes and this and that. It's like, there, there's always going to be somebody that works real hard is going to be good at something. Sure. And, but some people also are just going to have an advantage in the gene pool. Without a doubt. Sure. You know, and it's like, it, it's okay to be both or mm-hmm. admit it. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, like. Or to be a combination of both. Yeah. I mean, I, I know a guy that I went to the Matha with. He barely lifted weights, right? But was always just a shredded, like, beast, right? And then he went to Penn State. Then he went to Canada for a year. Then he played in the NFL for like 15 years, right? <laughs> right? Now, I'm sure at some point he obviously got into a workout routine. Right. But, he but like when a- we were, you know what I mean? He was like, I think a freshman or sophomore. Like he was already starting a varsity. I mean, he was the man. Dude, I, I went to the same, same state with a, I played college with a guy. It was a teammate of mine. But he was like the high school player of the year or whatever. Right. Get to college. I think he's all that. He's an amazing player. He will not go in the weight room. He will not do any running. He will not do crap. Right. So then we have spring ball or whatever the hell it is right before summer. We have summer festivities, and, and they, let him, they let him skip all that. Okay. So he doesn't have to do any of that because he's going to go, and he's going to have to train for the Olympics. All right? Jeez. All right. He decides that he doesn't want to really do the Olympics because they're making him train. Oh, he doesn't want to do the and Olympics because he's got to do stuff. And it pisses him off because he's got to run. So he gets in the 4 by 100 and on his leg, he smokes Carl Lewis. Now, he did win a gold medal with the U.S. Olympic team, but as far as his leg of that 4 by 100 yeah. He smoked every single other guy in his Jesus. time. I mean, just got didn't do anything. It's amazing. Then he went on to play for the Raiders for like 10 years. <laughs> that is wild. God, man. And his last name was Jet. Oh, James Jet. Oh, he could fly. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. That's okay. crazy. I remember James yeah. Jet. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, right? Like, I don't know. Like, Patrick Mahomes. Like, I don't doubt that he works hard. I'm sure he does. But also, like, his father played in the major leagues. Yes. Yeah. Right? It's kind of like we talk about, like, a Nicolas Cage or... Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, but baseball doesn't come naturally. Baseball is one of those sports where I think, as far as your technique is concerned, you could be a natural... Like, you could have a natural swing like Ken Griffey Jr. That doesn't mean right. you're going to be a natural glove. You know, like, no, you no, know, no. I'm just saying, like, his parents... But it helps. Dad right. was a pro. But what I'm was saying... Was a professional athlete. Right. 
But what I'm saying is you can see that his dad worked with Patrick Mahomes as a baseball player with the way he throws that ball and releases it. Well, yeah, sure. you know, he throws it like a guy sometimes. But that also goes, goes two, back to you know? it because, like, your dad does this, so your right. dad can show you. Yeah. Instead of watching a video. Right. You know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Your dad's a professional athlete. Like, he has time to work out with you and throw and the real ball. What's your dad do for a living? Plays baseball. Right. Right. What's your dad do? He's like, I don't know, but he's got to do it for eight hours. He comes home and we can't talk to him for five minutes. Right. So he's saying, like, if he's a lawyer, <laughs> if he's a lawyer, you don't want to go to work with him. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Go he's to very work. successful. Brings home the bacon. You know what I mean? But you're like, if your dad's a pro baseball player, it's like, Dad, Dad, me and my friends want to go to the game. Yeah, I mean, right, when I was a little, little kid, my dad had an office job, and the most exciting part about going to work with him was was the water cooler. <laughs> what, just cold? Just cold. Or the globe. And it would bubble. Like, <laughs> I, you got to remember, like, this thing is a kid. <laughs> I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> 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 that's, that's so sad. Can we get some more cold water? <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, you had a soda machine in the building or something. Nah, nah, it was just, yeah, it's just, it's just water. water. It's just warm ass water. <laughs> Well, you could get co- cold or hot. Oh, that's what made the water machine so exciting. <laughs> all right, I guess nobody else was really into that. We have one now. I, I use it all the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're gonna check out something tonight. Uh, There's a series premiere of Mr. Mayor over on NBC. That's Ted Danson, uh, Bobby Monahan, and Holly and Holly Hunter for all of that. Okay, thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You are listening to the Men's Room. New on Curiosity Stream, she was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And... What if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's impossible escapes. Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. $20 $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. A guy walking his dog and is horrified after the dog digs up a huge sex toy, which was buried in the snow. Meanwhile, a woman driving down the highway has a huge piece of plywood slammed through her windshield after uh, sorting, uh, figuring out there was nowhere to go. Lava walking down the highway in Massachusetts described as very chill. Man falls asleep in McDonald's drive through with his coffee he needed to fill. And you should go buy a Powerball or Mega Millions jackpot ticket. It's time for your headline. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my car. All right, our top story. We go down to Florida where it's a scene right out of Final Destination. The film had multiple gruesome scenes, but the one that sticks to memory the most is the log that falls from a moving semi-truck directly into the windshield of a car behind it. A similar scene unfolded in Florida where a woman is lucky to be alive after a sheet of plywood fell off of a lumber truck and into her windshield. Jesus. Luckily, the board hit her door frame and broke, causing no injury. But she pooped herself. You wondered if oh, people actually pooped themselves. I'm going to say she did. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Not to mention, you see that entire thing just slide down there right into your windshield. Like, this is this flat surface that just looks like a blade coming right at you. She was, yeah, she saw a she few pooped. things. Yeah, 100%. She can say she didn't poop. I don't believe her. She pooped. That's right. <laughs> she had to change her pants in the car if she said she didn't poop. That'd be my first question, ma'am. Are you all right? Did you poop? <laughs> We're here live on the scene with the woman that was nearly hit by the plywood. <laughs> ma'am, did you poop yourself? I would have. <laughs> I was wondering if you did. You are a trooper. Are you thinking about pooping yourself? <laughs> did you stop by a porta potty before you had this interview? And if you didn't, you had to poop yourself. <laughs> Ran to the bushes real fast. 
In other news, over on the east side, a driver in Massachusetts saw something interesting while out on the road as well. The driver was going about his commute when he saw a llama standing in a field that he didn't belong in. He approached the animal, which he described as quote-unquote chill, and found that it was both hungry and thirsty, suggesting that it had been on its own for a while. Since uh, they're still trying to find out where the animal came from, as none of the locals reported having lost a llama. Did you see what happened to the llama, though? No. So they sent him to this rescue, right? Okay. Uh, apparently this llama is incredibly friendly. Nice. And you just, so the woman is like, I've never had a llama before. I've got like goats and horses. Sure, sure. Take sure. this llama in, right? Cool. So she said she spent the entire night drinking Merlot in the barn, hanging out, talking to this llama. Nice. Llama's so She's like, I'm in love with this thing. It's so nice. <laughs> I'm not giving it back. The thing is, they, they brought it to wherever the authorities are. There's some sort of a, a barn what's the word for it it's a, it's a barn check basically everybody has an account of all the animals that they have in their barns in some some uh, uh, database and everybody that had llamas had all of their llamas so there is no evidence at all as to where this thing came from where did this llama come from <laughs> this llama's been walking for a while llama like drama that, like, that llama doesn't belong in that field <laughs> right like how do you know that that's got to be a field that he's seen before that has had something other than llamas in it. Like, maybe it's out in a cornfield. I don't know. Because <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, Ted. A lot of people drive by gated fields and just, huh, there's a llama Well, the there. phrasing's just odd. If it's like, saw something he shouldn't have, a llama. But it's like, no, he saw a llama in a field it didn't belong That's there. right. <laughs> hey, llama, you don't belong here, man. That's where the pigs are. That's not a llama field. It's your part of town, llama. Sign says right there, pigs, not llamas. We bought we alpacas. <laughs> <laughs> Over in Philadelphia, there's a new class that is uh, that has some real popularity. Someone in the area has started up a gritty themed embroidery class based on the Flyers hockey uh, hockey mascot that people can sign up for and take uh, for the low price of sixty dollars. And the class is so popular that all of the available spots sold out within hours. The class also comes with a bottle of orange wine that people can enjoy while learning the activity. That's why they joined. Yeah, not at all for the... I mean, when you look at gritty, you don't think to yourself, man, that is master embroidery. Yeah. That's more like I clean my lint filter or my dryer. My kid made this. But I get where they're coming from. They want embroidery to be a more fun thing. They want it to be better than just the thing that your grandma did on a pillow where she made a flower or a fun little vine hey, design. Plenty of old women are doing it on buses now. Absolutely. So you know what? You can embroider gritty onto your jacket or something like that. What kind of that. wine is orange? I know. That's orange fair. Wine. Orange wine. <laughs> i never heard <laughs> orange wine. There's a reason you have it. That's right. got to be a drink that you can make, right? Yeah, it's called a screwdriver. Or Bruno. Or Mimosa. Right. <laughs> Let the orange ferment. Back to finding strange things. <laughs> A man in Scotland out walking his dog noticed something inappropriate laying in the snow. The man took to social media to post about his dog's discovery, a long, pink, phallic sex toy. Yeah. Mm. He posted the image of the unit calling it, quote-unquote, disgusting, and saying that he was oh, very, very on. angered you at this moment one. in time. What is he mad about? Right. I mean, nothing to be mad about. It's bigger than yours? Here's what you have to know about this person, is that when he posted it, he posted, quote, I am very, very angered at this moment in time. You really shouldn't be, dude. It, it's a sex toy. That wording itself. I'm very, very angered at this moment in time. I'm pissed off about it. That's what you say. Right. This is something that you laugh about. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's a chuckle. I've seen a used condom on the ground hundreds of times. and never went like, oh, God. I mean, I always have the same thought. Like, eh. But I never like, this has just ruined my day. Let's me take a picture and post this. <laughs> this is the worst day of my life now that I saw this unused <laughs> condom. Others commenting on the picture weren't yeah, quite as upset, uh, with mul multiple people asking if he was selling it, and one commenter <laughs> saying that he wasn't, quote, as angry as the woman that lost it. Yeah, that's a good point. Those things do not come cheap from what I understand. So losing yeah. one in the snow is probably not the best thing. Why did you lose one in the snow is the real question. That's fair. Maybe it was part of a very funny snowman. <laughs> My favorite's finding uh, walking down the sidewalk sometimes, and there'll just be a hair extension sitting there. You're like, oh, oh there was a fight. Yeah, and so that's a fight right there. <laughs> Missed it. A man in Florida was arrested for his loud snoring. <laughs> wow. The man was caught sleeping in his car outside of the drive through lane of the local McDonald's. Employees called police, then asked the man uh, who that. Blah, who asked the man for his driver's license, to which he replied that he didn't have one. He was arrested for driving on a suspended license and DUI. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, you saw logs like that in a drive-thru? <laughs> just to be the person behind him, though. 
you, once that's you get in the there, problem. It's it like, did say that he was outside of the drive-thru lane. Okay, that's, that's, okay. that's better. Which still causes issues. Somebody's looking out there saying, uh, I think somebody's sleeping. Or dead. Until yeah. you hear them. Yeah. And like you said, Ted, somebody's snoring that hard behind the wheel. They're not just tired, man. They're <laughs> right. Yeah. That's a drunk tired. We've all heard that snore. <laughs> well, I haven't, but I usually give it. Right. Yeah, I'm about to say, I've been told that I have that snore. I oh, drank whiskey tonight, didn't you? Yeah. Two officers in Canada can have landed themselves in some hot water. The officers were both out on patrol, but suspicions were raised when dispatch couldn't contact one of them. Using the trackers on the officer's patrol car, they followed the signal to a local hotel where they found the other officer's unmarked cruiser as well. After finding the pair did have a room at the hotel, they were busted in on and both subsequently arrested. I mean, here's my thing. Like, you are a cop. You know your patrol car is being tracked. Mm-hmm. And you know that basically, even though you're on duty, you're still kind of on call. You know, dispatch reaches out to right. you to tell you, you know, this is a situation if you can handle it. And you had to think that during your shift, at some point, someone's going to reach out to you. Right. And that if they can't find you, they might panic a little bit. Again, because you're a cop. And then you realize that the car you're driving is track. Wait, like, just wait till you're off duty. Right. They can track your car. You have one of the few jobs where you literally, out of the blue, they're going to reach out to you. But there's a level of importance that you respond, right? Right. You ever look at two yeah. people and just know they're right for each other? You ever see the picture of these two? Yeah. They look exactly like the two people. They, the they, they really do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. So I'm like, like, yeah. like, of course. And like, just don't do it on like, duty. Right. I get you right. guys are together. You, yeah. And you're right. You look like you should be a couple. Right. right. Probably like decent neighbors. Yeah. All the, but really, dude, you did it on duty. Come on. Which tells me somebody's married. But that, that is what I'm guessing. And that is it for your headlines with that. Mike Hawk is out. Bad choice Friday. Ted versus the FCC in a positive Friday. We'll see you tomorrow, bitch. Yes, indeed. It is all true. But in the meantime, well, we be all about this biatch. So until next time, please do what you do best. And for Letha's sake, stay beautiful. This room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man! A Double Flush production. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history, but the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com.